and uh, this is Dr. Shauli Mukherjee. Uh, I have been uh, working in the educational sector for the past uh, two decades now. Uh, I have been the principal of three international schools of repute in West Bengal. And out of that, uh, two schools have been exclusively founded by me as the founder principal. And among them, uh, one school happened to be the first STEM school in West Bengal, which was also eventually awarded for being the second best international day school in West Bengal. All through my career, I have worked extensively uh, in the field of school education, leadership, teacher training and teacher empowerment. Currently, I am the Director of School of Education and Dean of Student Affairs at one of the premier universities of Eastern India. Apart from that, uh, as a thought leader, I am being associated with a lot of educational organizations in the senior advisory capacity all across India. And additionally, as a motivational speaker, I regularly speak on different platforms on various educational topics, initiatives and endeavors in summits, conferences, conclaves, webinars and seminars. Also, I would like to say that, uh, you know, uh, on the educational front, I have a PhD in English literature and uh, I have been felicitated for uh, outstanding doctoral thesis in English literature by the ex-governor of West Bengal. You know, I have always believed uh, in the transformative part of education, in bringing about a visible and tangible change in uh, people's lives around us. And I believe that education can truly impact a people's lives, you know, in meaningful and thoughtful manner. So I sort of, you know, turned my passion into my profession. So for me, it has been a very uh, conscious intersection between what I love doing and what I am good at. But having said so, I would also like to say that uh, you know, something that triggered me and something that has always, you know, kept me on the move was that the current education system, you know, if uh, uh, if the education, if, if the formal education system that we uh, see it as, if it promises to give somebody a decent living at the end of formal education, uh, up to the completion of the formal education. So already we can say that it's a flawed system because 50% of the graduates, they don't get any jobs after completing their uh, formal education. And 80% of uh, the new hires, the employers would say that, uh, you know, they, are, uh, they, uh, they do not uh, possess the requisite skills to be retained in the employment sector. So if we see these statistics, we already know that the current education system, there must be some flaw in the current education system where there is a huge gap between academia and industry where academia is not able to prepare uh, the youths of today to face the industrial challenge and i see a lot of fallacy here because uh, you know it is it, it has been a common practice that uh, since childhood we tell the children to draw uh, and to color within the lines and then we expect them to think out of the box when they grow as adults. Then uh, we always uh, sort of prioritize, uh, you know, arriving at one particular right answer and we don't give that much priority when a child is coming up with a very thoughtful and a meaningful question. So the ability to come up with a meaningful question is not prioritized but rather we are all you know uh, out to applaud when uh, the children come up with one right answer we sort of prioritize a lot on the intelligence quotient but hardly give prominence to the other kinds of quotient emotional quotient happiness quotient passion quotient spiritual quotient social quotient and something which is of so much relevance in the present day context that is the adversity quotient so 
what about these kinds of questions? I mean, they are equally, if not more important in the present day context. You know, I feel that uh, uh, the current education system does not require any kind of reformation. It requires a revolution. Nothing short of a revolution will work for the current educational system because it's already flawed. I have always, you know, uh, wanted to work with the influencers and enablers of education who will be driving these changes. And by this, I mean the teachers who come with, you know, young, fresh minds and they come with a lot of dreams and aspirations to, you know, create a real difference in the field of education. So I have always wanted to work with those uh, minds, uh, to nurture those young minds. And that is exactly what I'm doing in my capacity as the Director of School of Education uh, at Adamus University right now, where, you know, we deal with the BA scholars and the PhD scholars in education. So I'm very lucky to, you know, get this opportunity of touching those young minds whom I believe would uh, make a very big difference moving ahead. So started off as a teacher and I, I, I'm still a teacher. I still uh, wear, you know, I wear different hats, but I still uh, am very comfortable in calling myself a teacher because I do teach uh, even now. So this is something uh, which I always wanted to do. And uh, yes, uh, in the last 23 years, there had been a lot of, uh, you know, obstacles. Uh, there had been a lot of challenges. But I've always believed in one thing that, um, you know, uh, potential opportunities, great opportunities, they often come in the guise of challenge. So they often come uh, to your life and uh, at different junctures in your life in order to make you much better and a confident version of yourself. So it is up to you whether you are looking at it uh, from which kind of perspective. So whether it's going to make you better or it's going to make you bitter. So whether it's going to make you a victor or it's going to make you a victim. So the choice always lies with you. So uh, I'm a great believer in this. Uh, I always believe that, uh, you know, if you have a greater purpose behind what you do, so that purpose is a kind of a very strong magnet. So you don't need anything to, you know, motivate people around you so that, uh, purpose, that strong purpose is itself a kind of a strong magnet which pulls people towards your vision and that also you know helps you to maybe get up every morning with renewed uh, energy and enthusiasm to continue the kind of work that you always want to continue. So I am a firm believer in uh, the Japanese concept of Ikigai which uh, means the purpose of your existence. So the day you get your Ikigai, the day you get your purpose, uh, nothing can stop you. Absolutely nothing can stop you. I think that in order to survive uh, and to exist, and uh, definitely in order to thrive in the VUCA world, and that is a volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous world, uh, the new leaders who will be coming into this profession, one of the noblest profession of all times, you know, uh, with an ability of touching the lives of the young people in a meaningful and productive manner, I think they all must have, uh, you know, that flexibility and that adaptability towards change. I mean, they cannot be immune to the changes that are happening around them. So there has to be a lot of learning in a sense, there will be a lot of unlearning, relearning, and then learning. So they have to be self-motivated learners. They have to continue uh, learning uh, and, you know, remain a lifelong learner. That is one thing. And secondly, I strongly believe in the power of collaboration because I believe that as teachers, the greatest resource that the teachers can have is each other. And without collaboration, your growth is limited to your own perspectives. So collaboration is the key. And even the present 
uh, in the present context of uh, the you know the covid times it has also taught that you cannot uh, continue working in a silo so you have to you know move out and you have to collaborate with like minded people and get their opinions and ideas and then you know sort of uh, you know continue with your journey so these are i think very important having a growth mindset ability to continuously experiment stretch yourself expand yourself and you know giving more importance to the process rather than the outcome that is something which is also very important and i would also like to say that the ability to be curious at all times and the ability to be inquisitive and asking a lot of questions about what is happening around you do not take everything for granted so education sector is one such sector which uh, i believe uh, you know it is a last to change you know so everything will change and then maybe uh, education sector will change so the his everything is changing around us the histories are changing the geographies are changing but unfortunately our education system is almost the same so the future leaders who will be coming into this profession they must have that curious mindset they must have that ability of questioning each and everything around them challenging the status quo something uh, that has uh, that has been a driving force for me as well so if i can give you an example i have always you know uh, i always had uh, you know questions in my mind like why only the teachers they do the corrections using a red ink pen I mean, what is the use of that? I mean, they can do it with multicolored pens also. But why is that so? I mean, I have never got any suitable answer for that, right? So why are the, uh, you know, children still in most of the schools sitting in row and column sitting arrangement? Why they are not coming together and sitting as a group? You know, this seating in rows and columns, it has actually come from the prison system. you know the convicts uh, used to be uh, put in different cells and columns so that there would be less interference there would be less chaos but that is not exactly what we want our children to be right so we will want them to come together we want them to collaborate with each other and to discuss to share to interact to brainstorm and come up with novel ideas so if our intentions are very clear intentions have to be pretty much clear that what it is that exactly we want our present generation to do then i think we start questioning a lot of uh, you know things that are that have been happening uh, you know from times immemorial and then we sort of you know start bringing about those significant changes and when i say bringing about those significant change it may not be something which is a very big change you know often we make a we often make a very big uh, you know mistake in thinking that changes are always very big changes no it may not be so you can start with a very small change but let me tell you that if the changes are done with a proper intention they will always have a ripple effect what i believe is that the teachers uh, they need that choice and that voice both so they need to have the choice and they need to have that voice so both are very important and often in our current educational system we see that uh you know when young teachers they join this profession with a lot of uh, dreams and aspirations of bringing about real changes uh in the system uh, they are often uh you know given a kind of an outdated content or curriculum to teach with with which they have hardly uh, had interacted with so they don't engage with the content they don't engage with the curriculum that they are supposed to teach i mean that is so very much faulty i mean if as a teacher you are going to deliver something up and you don't have a kind of a control over the content that doesn't make a sense i mean the teachers cannot be uh you know merely transacting the content or the knowledge they are not for that purpose they are here to inspire to stimulate and to provoke and to inspire that lifelong learning among the children the children are in fact amazing they are inherently inquisitive 
and innately creative. I have never seen a child who is not, uh, you know, interested and enthusiastic about learning new things. So, as Pablo Picasso had rightly said, that every child is a born artist, but the challenge is to remain an artist when you grow up. And I think the responsibility lies on the educators, on the adults, on the parents, that we have to you know, give them that proper environment so that their creative genius, that innovative spark that is already there in our children, those things get nurtured and developed in a proper manner. So the responsibility is on us and we have to shoulder that responsibility either as educators or as adults or as parents. So, especially uh, as a woman, uh, as a woman leader, I won't say as a woman leader, but, uh, you know, uh, a leader in that sense of the term, a leader must have that vision, that goal, that big purpose for which uh, the leader is trying to work. You know, if the vision is very much clear in front of you, and if you can communicate that vision in a very proper and in a very convincing manner, I think people uh, sort of flock around you and they also want to be a part of that great mission, you see. So uh, I won't say that uh, my entire uh, career journey or the trajectory of my entire career has been the bed of roses. No, it has not been so. Definitely, I had a lot of challenges and uh, you know when you're trying to uh, bring about significant changes in a kind of a system which is uh, more comfortable in remaining outdated and obsolete so when you're trying to bring about a lot of changes so the change has to be first affected in the mindset of the people so changes are okay i mean it's possible it's feasible but changing the mindset is very very difficult so that requires a lot of, uh, I think, perseverance and you cannot lose faith uh, in yourself. And when people start doubting your intentions and when people start uh, you know, questioning your abilities, you cannot stop moving forward. So you have to uh, you know, be on your path with more resilience and with more optimism you know, not in order to prove to anybody that you can do it, but in order to prove to yourself that your intention in the very first place had been sound. So I think that uh, confidence and that conviction, uh, you know, uh, is something which is very important, not only for uh, women leaders, but for all leaders, I think. So uh, my message or my advice, whatever it is, uh, it will be uh, that, you know, uh, if you have to lead uh, a team or a group of people, uh, first of all, in uh, rather than concentrating on having to lead a team or a group of people, I think self-leadership is also very important. So you have to be very much aware of it and you have to be very much aware of self-leadership and you have to be very much aware of uh, you know managing your own self having a kind of a discipline and having a kind of a proper vision and uh, you know intention and then if you if, if you know that you are doing something which is right then i think it becomes more it, it becomes easier and becomes more comfortable for you as well as for people around you to believe in what you are doing. So your intentions have to be proper and uh, your communication has to be very sound. And for all the leaders, uh, I would say for all the upcoming leaders, I would say that they need to have that conviction, that confidence and that strength uh, and that belief in themselves. So that is so very important. So you know every every time things will not go as per what you want but definitely if you have that courage and fortitude you will definitely be able to you know fight back and uh, i think the, uh, the screen froze 
no i can't yeah really now it's okay yes it's okay now it's okay yes it's, it's okay yeah so um my message or my advice to all the upcoming leaders would be that have a lot of belief in yourselves have that confidence have that conviction that you can really do it and the very first day when you had actually set up set out on your journey with a lot of uh, you know hope positivity dreams aspirations do not forget that first day of your life and being a spiritually grounded person myself i have always believed that uh the very fact that we are still on this planet earth it signifies that we still matter so if we had not uh, you know if we if we haven't uh, you know mattered we wouldn't have existed on this planet earth so we are here to do something significant and uh, if we, if we can be reminded of our purpose on almost a daily basis i think that gives a very strong dose of confidence and conviction that will take us far